Hello everyone, my name is Kuru Sharfani and I am sociologist and the writer of the book uh, Infinitism and also uh, a few books on infinity and infinitology. In this program uh, we are uh, making a lecture of the book Infinitology uh, which is this book uh, with the title Infinitology and the subtitle Foundations of a new discipline. So the idea is to establish a discipline that can study uh, infinity uh, for the practical usage. Uh, we started in the uh, uh, three last parts to uh, make this le uh, lecture and uh, we finished uh, the part that is effectively the foreword uh, of the book. We finished that. If you are interested, uh, you can uh, watch it in the uh, last third uh, production uh, that we had as a video set. And uh, from today, we will start with the introduction. I will read uh, the different parts of this text and then I will explain it uh, more and more. So let us start with uh, the first paragraph of the uh, introduction of the book, Infinitology, Foundations of a New Discipline. So once human beings invented suitable telescopes, we discovered that space was bigger than what we thought before. Likewise, by building more perfect microscopes, scientists discovered that the texture of matter is composed of smaller particles than those they supposed earlier. This is a repeated trend with which the history of science is suffused. So that's the idea. Uh, when we uh, start to use the more sophisticated tools for uh, observing the space or observing um, uh, the inner part of the different matters, we can see that there are more and more elements from which uh, these two uh, microscopic and macroscopic uh, parts or space or frames are composed. So which means that if we get uh, more sophisticated tools, we can effectively discover more and more elements uh, that compose space, galaxies, universe, and also the uh, deeper and deeper parts of the structure of matter, right? And that's uh, what we can see in the, uh, uh, in the history of science and I wrote some uh, articles about that and that you can find in this website and also on the website of the uh, Center for Research and Development of uh, uh, Infinitology that I will present later. So let's uh, continue our lecture. From the above historical point, one can infer this basic idea. The more perfect our knowledge and tools become, the more constitutive elements we discover in the macrocosm as well as in the macrocosm. So uh, this is what we see, right? Uh, if you look uh, with all the details necessary uh, at the uh, history of science, you know, astrology or uh, on the other hand, physics, uh, biologies, uh, and uh, so on, you can see that uh, there would be always and always uh, other new elements that we will discover. So uh, there is a question that uh, will come in our mind immediately when we think like that, that if we get the uh, more perfect tools, we can effectively uh, discover more elements, more components, right? So, look at the continue, uh, uh, continuation of this paragraph. 
So if we assure the survival of our species with further advancement, we would be able to discover a greater extent of these constitutive levels of material existence. It would even be possible that at a given stage we gain an exponential momentum in detection, sightings and discoveries. So, uh, this means that uh, in order to get there, to discover more and more, what we need is just to assure the survival of the human beings. That's all. If we can keep the human civilization on the earth, it would be possible to imagine that with more advancement, more progress in, the, in science, philosophy, mathematics, and also in technology, we will have uh, the acquaintance or the knowledge of the new constitutive levels of material existence as well as in a microcosm uh, or in a microcosm. So uh, there is no really any boundary, there is no end. Uh, whatever is your choice uh, to go through the uh, microcosmos or ma macrocosmos, you will find that there would be always and always more and more constitutive elements, more and more structure, more and more elements, more and more particles, subparticles, sub subparticles, and so on and so on. How we know that? Through the uh, history of science. Because if you read that, you see that from a very general idea about the uh, natural world, we get uh, where we are. Uh, with a very precise idea about uh, really small elements from which the matter is composed, right? So that's why uh, we think that by continuing, by uh, just assuring our survival as the human beings and going through the same momentum of the advancement and the progress in science and technology, we can find more and more the constitutive elements, more and more particles, more and more components. We said as well uh, in macrocosmos as in microcosmos. So same thing, the same reality is uh, uh, in front of us. And as uh, we saw in the last phrase of this paragraph, uh, it would be even possible that at a given stage we gain an exponential momentum, right? Which means that uh, there would be a huge uh, speed, a huge momentum of discovery and detection. Why? Because we start to accumulate more and more knowledge, more and more theories, more and more data, and then we can use them to accelerate the uh, momentum of uh, sightings and discovery. All right, let's continue. Almost immediately a question emerged in any inquiring mind. What is this question? If the persistence of humankind continues, is there any end to this process of discovering new macro and micro echelons in the universe? You know, that's the maybe the most fundamental question that we can put uh, regarding this uh, topic. Finally, okay, we keep going with the progress, with discoveries, with uh, taking knowledge of more and more elements. And finally, where we have to stop? Why we have to stop? Will we stop somewhere? Will we be an end somewhere? And uh, where is it? Where is it exactly uh, to say that, okay, from this step, from this point, we don't have any other elements, you know, uh, or sub-elements. We don't have any 
uh, particle or subparticle uh, beyond that. Is it possible? Well, let's see how uh, we try to answer to this question uh, in the book. While it's difficult to answer this query positively beforehand, right? Human history in general and the factual trend of the history of science in particular suggests we answer negatively to this question. Negatively. What does it mean? It means that no, there is no end. We shouldn't be worried about that. If there was an end, we should have touched that uh, before. It's not the case. So that's why we said, no, if we keep making headway in science and technology, there would not be any limit to the levels of the structure of matter. And that's a huge claim. What we are suggesting here, you know, very uh, moderately uh, is, is huge, is the starting point of uh, all the idea of the infinitism and all the work of the uh, infinitology, which means that uh, there is no any end to our uh, exploration for the matter in the inner uh, structure of the matter in the sub 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 particles or uh, at the biggest uh, echelon that we can imagine we can imagine but it doesn't depend really on our imagination <laughs> it goes on it uh, it keeps going you know with more and more bigger and bigger uh, space or universe so the idea is that there would be never an end, uh, neither for the microcosmos nor for the macrocosmos. So we, uh, we have to keep in our mind that the idea of infinitism, the uh, basic of the infinitology is actually uh, uh, not considering any and any limit, any boundary, any endpoint for whatever is material in the macro or micro uh, levels. That's the idea. That's the main idea. If you uh, uh, grasp this idea, you can understand everything that we are go going to say uh, regarding infinitism, infinity, and infinitology, right? Okay, let's continue. We said This means that we could infinitely explore the macrocosmos and the macrocosms and the macrocosms and the components that we will find in the larger universe in the small scale version would be infinite. So whatever is the scale you are exploring, it could be macrocosms or microcosms. Anyway, we can always and always find something new, something beyond. Beyond means smaller in the microcosm and bigger in the macrocosm. And later I will explain that all these uh, issues that we have with the dimensions, you know, macro, micro, are uh, completely superflu and uh, this is the invention of our mind and the structure of matter doesn't obey, uh, doesn't follow at all this uh, classification that we do regarding the structure of the universe in the uh, micro level or macro level, it doesn't make sense. But uh, for now it's not really uh, 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 our uh, issue. Uh, the idea is that the components that we will find in the universe would be more and more infinitely, infinitely, endlessly. You see that from here we are in the introduction of this book. 
from the introduction, from the beginning, we are establishing the basic ideas of what could be a, a new understanding of the of infinity as a concept, but not as a speculative concept, but as a material concept, right? As a materialist or materialistic concept. This is our approach. In infinitism, we are not really inventing something uh, uh, intellectually or uh, by imaginary. No. We are touching the reality. We are going through the uh, material world and universe uh, scientifically and uh, with the help of technology and we try to understand what's going on there in order to establish the basic understanding of what is the infinite. Now, we continue by saying this. But how could we ascertain this answer, right? That there would be more and more, infinitely. How can we gain confidence in the endlessness of the process of finding something bigger or smaller than what we have already supposed as being, pay attention, the biggest or as the smallest. And we will see later that uh, how it's uh, far from any uh, precaution, right? Uh, far from any uh, well thought uh, approach to talk about the biggest, the smallest. And unfortunately, you will see that this is what the two-day science is saying. They are talking about the smallest element, the smallest particles. The smallest? What does it mean? When the history of science is there to show us that uh, century after century, right, we got uh, some new... Uh, knowledge about the new elements, the new particles. So what? Uh, smaller, yes, but smallest? You see, from this uh, initial part, which is not uh, for now uh, more than an introduction, we can see that a lot of ideas that we got as obvious, as evident, uh, for uh, for ourselves in the scientific community could be effectively uh, shaped by uh, such a philosophical view uh, that asserts that there is no smallest, there is no the smallest, there is no the biggest. So, let's see. To find a relevant answer to these questions, our suggestion is to establish a specialized field of study focused on infinity. You know, we don't want just to claim something, uh, you know, uh, conceptually, speculatively, and conceptually uh, saying that, okay, it would be this or that. No. We would like to have a methodology for that. We would like to establish a discipline and that can take her methodologically or methodically uh, of infinity you know and by going through a very uh, serious uh, methodological process to see if effectively we can assert that there would be never uh, any the biggest, the smallest in the universe. Is it true or not? We don't say that uh, there wouldn't be, but we said that uh, it could be, but we have to verify that. And in order to verify that, we need a discipline. We need a uh, institutionalized, well-established uh, uh, framework of study of infinity. And that's why we are suggesting that here in the introduction. A discipline that takes into consideration the features of infiniteness 
and its modus operandi. Modus operandi, and the, the way that it operates. Inside matter, how the infiniteness is going on inside matter, within matter. So, how we call this discipline? We call such a discipline infinitology, right? What is this? It's a multidisciplinary field where philosophical theorems open the way to scientific discoveries and these latter help technology bring forth the necessary tools for more efficiency. So you can see that from the beginning we are uh, funding this discipline on uh, three uh, foundation, right? in the uh, three solid uh, ground. F first, philosophy, in order to give us a very large idea, and then science, in order to make the discovery, uh, the different discoveries that are necessary to affirm or to verify our hypothesis, and finally technology, in order to provide the tools, because we need a lot of tools for that. So. That's a multidisciplinary uh, field. Even though we talk about a discipline, but this discipline includes all of this philosophy, sciences, and also technologies. And that's the interesting part of this adventure. So, now, infinitology needs to be powerful and well-connected disciplines since it wants to drive beyond any other specific uh, knowledge of the universe. So we are talking about something that goes beyond the frameworks of any science, right? So that's why we need also uh, philosophy, because the philosophy has this capacity of, you know, going beyond the specific uh, matter, the specific uh, fields uh, where this or that science is operating. Now, we said it should embrace all the scientific acquaintances and at the same time, sorry, at the same time <coughs> it goes much farther than each of them. Huh? Not only we use the different scientific acquaintance, the different scientific disciplines, but also we go farther and further, right? Infinitology presents the most challenging undertakings a new discipline has ever faced, right? So that's why from this uh, beginning, that's the first book we published in 2021 regarding the this new discipline infinitology from these uh, first steps we are aware that uh, that would be a real challenge so that's why we call that the most challenging undertakings a new discipline has ever faced right and because any other discipline has a specific has a very defined uh, field of study, but here we are talking about something that is essentially, substantially, and conceptually huge, infinity. Uh, infinito logic, the knowledge of infinity. So that's why uh, it's a question of a, a real, uh, a real challenge with multiple you know, uh, sub-challenges. And that's why uh, uh, we want to elaborate it in the frame of an institution. And uh, we try to get through this institution by creating a center that is called the Center of uh, uh, Research. And uh, here, uh, let me show you in the home. Here we are. Uh, the the crdi.com uh, gives you uh, brings you to this website, the Center for Research and Development of Infinitology, 
and you can find uh, many many ideas uh, and articles paper papers books a uh, journal uh, uh, etc on this uh, uh, challenge on this discipline that we want to create in order to study infinito infinity and see how we can effectively apply our knowledge of infinity in the real world how we can get uh, some uh, mastering of matter the material world by having this idea that there wouldn't be any end to the structure of matter right uh, and uh, from that moment uh, many changes many changes will be brought to what we are doing as scientific work technological endeavors or the philosophical speculations so that's why uh, this is a very uh, exciting challenge at least for me and I am trying to share with you and we will continue the lecture of the introduction of the book Infinitology Foundations of a New Discipline in the next video. Thank you very much for uh, watching that and see you soon. Bye.